All right, welcome in everyone. Quick reminder, this talk is intended for educational purposes only. We're not financial advisors. Wanted to quickly recap the SPY here, basically since the last meeting, um, just to kind of paint the picture of where we're at. So last session, July 13th, highlighted by that uh, kind of blue mark there, we were at highs. The call at the time, not really the call, but the analysis was for continued chop and with upside targets at 440, nothing, nothing really huge. Um, what we saw here was a pullback retest into the 50 MA, which as you can see the past like six or seven times has been bought pretty aggressively. That's the orange moving average right through here. Same thing last week, bought aggressively off that level, uh, five or six days higher. And now the pullback today. So uh, like, like Mario and I were talking about into the Fed meeting tomorrow, uh, that it does kind of open the door for some uncertainty. And so some reference points to keep an eye on are definitely gonna be today's low at 436. That's gonna be a key reference point that I'm watching in SPY. That gives out as support, I suspect we'll, we'll quickly retest the 21 MA in the 433, 434 area. And that can, again, open the door into, into the 50 MA. I don't really think we're going to see that type of sell, but just want to stay open-minded here and keep these levels in mind. Um, what, what we did see here was a pullback, which created a higher low, and then we made new all-time highs. So in my opinion, uh, just based on the chart, this is still you know big picture bullish. And so I am leaning more to the bull side. I'm sure that that comes out in the analysis and in the watch list that I share every morning. Um, upside reference points are going to continue to be the 440 and the 442 from there just as FIB targets. So that sums up SPY uh, for the next few days, next couple of weeks. Hopefully that covers us. Mario, if you want to go ahead, I'll pass off host to you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Should have it now. I think I do have it. Uh, let me see, share screen, and then I'm gonna go with my loud, oh, number two. <clears throat> so welcome everybody. And let's start with the cues. So last time, as um, Kyle pointed out, that was on 7.13. Uh, we called the levels for the, the cues were 362.50 by 355 as the places where I wanted to get involved with the market. So let's see what, what happened. Just, um, so we understand exactly what, what's going on. I did like the action over the last 15 days. I uh, can't complain about it. Absolutely not. Uh, if you're trading, basically what we emphasized was that we're still in, a, in an uptrend. Uptrends are higher highs and higher lows, right? So as long as we continue to stay within our say we're within our parameters that we what we define as an uptrend we shouldn't have a problem continue trading it right so basically what we have is here we were at this oval right here on 713 the levels were 350 i'm sorry again 362.50 by 355 so 362.50 was the entry for uh oh i'm sorry the prior the prior high which we see it right here so once we take that out that was the indicator to go short right and the 355 was the level right here the prior high in here so that was the target right so if you took this short which i did that was a pretty good trade too right so that was absolutely normal that has no implications as far as the market being in trouble as long as we hold that level right if we go into fifths and you start doing your fifth analysis you can come from here to here and you will see that that's a retracement of pretty much nothing, like three or 4%, right? I was expecting actually a little bit of an overshoot to the downside to test at least the 350. We never made it. That was that day. And then the following day was just what we love to trade, right? Which is the over the prior day high, over the prior day high, over the prior day high, over the prior day high. I think a couple of days ago, I started mentioning that we were into five days up, right? It all, it all depends if you consider this one to be number one. But if not, this is one, two, three, four. So yesterday was day number five. You got to start checking into this action and start noticing the little things, little nuances be behind 
technical analysis, right? So what you have right here is a, is a gap down. This is a true gap. This is like, I know you guys call whatever, as long as it's over the prior day close, you call that a gap. Like for me, that's not a true gap. A gap is whenever you go outside of the range, but it's just, you know, making sure that we all use the same terminology or at least understand what we're talking about, right? So this is basically a gap down into a support zone on high volume. If we don't have the continuation, what I'm looking is for the next day to play to the long side, right? So we have it right here, we gap up because this outside of the prior day's range and all you have to play is the momentum. Next day, it's not really a true gap. So what you can expect is some sort of reversal. You see it right here prior to the day and then you close our highs. Then the next day is just a gap up, continuation. Then the next day is a gap up, continuation. Then the next day, but yesterday was not really a gap up. What we had was a minor try and we didn't even make a, uh, a significant new high. If you go look at the five days, this is like the day where we have like no progress whatsoever, right? So that's that puts it into question. Some of the guys that, that have worked with me know that once I get to two standard deviations or or three Bollinger Bands, two, three Bollinger Bands, I start looking for this red candle signal, right? The red candle signal is like, you have an extended move based on a volatility measure. And then you start looking for the red to come and then, you know, the, the momentum to take over to the short side. So that was basically why today my main trade of the day was the Qs and this is what we have. We have this you go into the 30 minute chart because I post it every day. So I, I, I wanna make sure that you guys understand what the heck I'm doing, right? So this is the reason why I do it, right? So you have the, this yesterday, right? I don't, you can't be too happy about it. Like after five or six days up and this is all you can do, right? So basically all I'm looking for is some level of support to get taken out. And then that's short, pure momentum trade you use your fifths, so you throw your fifths, and then I was expecting like a 38, but then we have a 38, and then we have a 50%. This is a technical bounce. We should expect it to see again 352 and then 360. And then we see if this is gonna be a hammer that is gonna hold. Why am I going into such detail about this? Because if you go back today, the close today, 364.44, is exactly the same close that we have over the last 15 days. So technically, you could say, well, nothing happened within the last two weeks, which is an absolute lie. Because what we have is a 4% or 3 or 3.5%, three 4 down move, and then another 5% move, and then another 2 or 3% move today, which is awesome. That's basically what we as traders love to, love to see, which is the volatility, right? This is not really chop. I consider this one to be chop, right? Like, yeah, I know it's in an uptrend, but how am I going to trade this one? I mean, I don't have real moves. Like we were talking yesterday and I was like, yeah, we have like a less than an ATR move. Today we have like a 1.5, almost two ATR move in the markets. So that gives us, gives us a lot of volatility. So with this said, let's see where we stand. And we come into the monthly chart and what we just talk. I mean, we're still in an uptrend, still going up. Then let's see the let's see the weekly. Let's see if we can find something in the weekly. So we come right here in the weekly, and what we have is an outside week last week, right? Meaning the low of the week was lower than the prior week's low, and the high of the week is higher than the prior week high. So what we have is a solid candle in control of the market. You guys know this one as a one, two, three. So that's the way I'm gonna be using it going forward, right? So I'm going to be using this candle, which is an outside week, as my one, right? So all I'm going to be lo looking to do over the next 15 days, and that's why I'm expending so much time in here, is I'm going to be working with this one as a weekly one, two, three, right? So the cues, I'm going to be doing a weekly one, two, three, setting up by an outside week that you can all see it and we can all talk about the same language and we understand exactly what's going on right at least as far as the structure and i was having some dms today and some private conversations today and i was like okay this is exactly what you need to do you need to know exactly where you are you come from here five or six days up how many times do the market actually run six days in a row not that many without a single 
red bar? Yeah, never. Not, <laughs> not that many, right? It doesn't happen. I mean, it's just like, so if you're looking to get long right at the open, you, you're betting on seven days up at three ATRs, two standard deviations, all time highs. What are the odds? Yeah, it can go seven. Absolutely. It can go eight. Absolutely. Anything can happen, right? It's about probability. Low probability. The odds are not in our favor. So what we have today, we have a red bar and then we have the biggest volume since the last time we actually traded down, right? You see the volume right here. So that's basically being in, being aware of the market, of the actual um, market structure that we're trading, right? So this is beautiful. Actually, I save it for <laughs> for study purposes, like, like Fibonacci trading 101. That's what you want to see, right? This is one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. One, you put it, touch. Now, what we have else, I mean, of, of course, we also have the 20 May. So what are the odds? I mean, you have the FIB, you have the 20 MA. So I don't know what stopped the market, like technically, but like intraday, I know exactly what stopped the market. Just buyers. The buyers decided that it was enough, you know, and they started buying. So this is what we're seeing right now. Of course, we just bounce. That's a technical bounce. Now we call, if we went under BWAP, that was a short. Uh, market was already closed. So let's see what's going to happen, right? So from here, Let's start looking at the charts and let's see who's acting like the market, which is one of the favorite uh, exercises that I like to do, right? So let's start with Apple. I don't want to spend too much time with Apple because, well, it's just reporting earnings. So um, tomorrow it's going to be on everybody's watch list and it's going to be a, um, a gap watch, right? So what we have right here in Apple is we couldn't break the 150. So pretty much like the market, we hit, we hit a, a pretty, pretty solid trade right here on this one. I think the entry was 125 last time we bought it for swings. I'm talking since it's the scope of this talk and this conversation we having. So we have the 150, whoever had it, you have the pullback right here. So if you bought it, here's the problem, right? Same problem with the market. We couldn't break. And now we have the pullback today into earnings. So how's the earnings? I have no idea. I haven't checked it, but it looks like the market is not liking it. So for Apple, it's going to be like whatever happens with earnings or whatever is not going to happen with earnings. We have a solid, uh, mm, I'm sorry, solid range that we're going to be working with, which is going to be 140 by 150. So Apple 140, 150, right? Then we digest the earnings and see what's what's going to happen. Look at the pattern. This is, this is a chart we're looking. We go into the weekly. I encourage everybody to do that. So this is where we, we broke from the 140. So hopefully we're gonna stop at 140 or else we're gonna go all the way back to the 137, which is right there too, right? So Apple apparently is not gonna help the market tomorrow. Let's see Amazon, which is coming with earnings in I think a couple of days. The put us at 729. So that's gonna be day after tomorrow. So what Apple, what Amazon did is like we have the same pullback as the market, but we did we couldn't make new highs, right? So I know we were waiting for this one to continue running into 377.76. Actually, my momentum indicator was telling me that uh, Amazon could have make it to the top of the range. So I was looking for a 36, 3800 move. But the problem is like today, right? So today, let's see if uh, it's doing anything from here now. So actually, this one is a pretty good look because we have the 3200 right here, which is um, this base that formed in the weekly chart. So we got the floor at 32, which is, well, it's too far. I think it is too far. So what I'm going to call for this one is just we're going to have to play it as an earnings play, right? No call on Amazon because the only thing I can do here is like tell you if tomorrow we go over 3700 is a long. Right. If tomorrow we go at 3,400 and you want to play earnings, then that's a buy. So earnings, earnings play. So let's do that one. We, that's out of the way. And this is the reason why I was in doubt we want to meet today. Here's Facebook, right? Facebook, one of the better looking ones. Why? Because we're making all time highs. Uh, that was on back of the earnings play from, um, from Twitter. So that was a bullish gap up after a nice pullback into the 50 day moving average. You know, I love those type of trades when there's like big volume. If you can see it right here, it's pretty much the highest volume in months. So that was the play of the day that day. And, and we pretty much nailed it to, 
that one that was that was really good on Friday, right? So it was just a rocket on Friday. Now, what do we have right here? So we have a three day. I'm gonna take this out now so we can see it better. Uh, we have a three day formation. So you know how we play this one, 37533. So Facebook remains as a momentum over 37533. Earnings, I think it's uh, tomorrow too. 728, earnings tomorrow. So I don't wanna, I know Kyle doesn't play the earnings. I may play a run into earnings tomorrow if I see it. If I see some sort of momentum coming into 375, I'll probably take some. And actually the after hours is giving us sort of that move that I would expect prior going into earnings. The main reason, and I don't know if you agree with me, it's, uh, let me see the weekly. The main reason, exactly, that's a one, two, three on the weekly. It's excellent, um, Hassan. That's exactly what I like to see. You see here, that's a buy. You see here, that's the setup. The main reason is like uh, they probably want to pump it up as much as they can, so they can see, they can they can sell as much out of the money and, and out of the money gambles at as expensive as expensive as they can into earnings, and then the next day probably just collecting the premiums, right? So that's pretty simple. That's why sometimes I play the run into earnings. So that's our Facebook. We got Microsoft done. So let's go and see MSFT and see what's going on with MSFT. And that was a good looking chart too. We have the pullback today. Look where we stopped. That was beautiful. Actually, I wasn't looking at that one. That, that would have been a great play. So we have the 283, that's where we came all the way down and now we're sitting at the 286. So basically for, for um, um, uh, Microsoft, and I know we have earnings tomorrow, I think. Oh, we just have earnings actually. So should be okay, not, not going anywhere. Anyways, for this one, now that we have the earnings out, so this is, this is a call for Microsoft. We're gonna watch that 282 right and we're going to watch the 289 so actually it's going to be 290 by 282 is a gap play okay it's going to be a pure gap play let's see how the after hours digest the moves and everything but i do like the setup the formation as long as we don't break too hard under 282 right so what we would look into do is let's say if this support is going to hold if not we can see it right here at 277 right so it could be 282 or 277 as a market profile uh, level just for the gap. So that's a gap for tomorrow uh, that actually looks pretty good. So that's a Microsoft. And then let's do Netflix. I see the last, I think that's the last one of the things that we're missing. And Google, sorry, yeah. So this one continues on the chop. This is, this is the definition of shop, like up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. We're trying to break what I like again is like the 50 is over the 20. That's very subtle, but you finally cross it, right? We finally cross it. Earnings is out of the way. They screw so many people out because they have like an implied move of, I don't know, like 50 points or something like that. It didn't move at all. So I'll refer back to my weekly chart and my weekly chart is showing me that there's like buyers of 507 or there was buyers of 497, 500, 500. So this is, you know, the best place to accumulate the um, Netflix. So I was not looking to go short unless we really actually broke the 500. We never did. So there's this people from the last pretty much two years accumulating at the same level. So I would expect this one to at any point in time be a sleeper. That's what I like to call it. Like five to five, you see my target, you see my trigger right there, like five to five. Once we start getting into the uh, momentum coming into what it's this sort of a long-term uh, range. So if you saw my notes, I call that a tradable range. So I have a Netflix in my tradable range, right? So for Netflix, uh, we have support that we all can see in the chart at around 505. And then we can expect to see 545, 540, 550, right? So that's 505, 550. How do we play it? It all depends on what style, what style, what type of playing, what type of trading you do. But I think anything over 520 can be played as a momentum trade for 520, 535. Those are like small scalps, right? 520, 535. But then the real move that I will like really like to capture is 505, 550, right? 560, once we get out, that'll be uh, 
pretty much all time highs for Netflix, right? Because then we'll be breaking out fi finally that big long term sideways move. Let's go to Google. Let's see how we're setting up. So for Google is um, looking like the better ones. And we, we are reporting, I think, today too. Yeah, 727. Yeah. So same without looking at the pre-market, uh, 2,700 by 2,600. So this is sort of like exactly what we're doing with, with uh, Microsoft, right? Keep in mind that it's 2,600, right? We're going to stay over that. And then since we're over 2,700 pre-market, that's the level that we expected to see. So this is actually going to be main watch for tomorrow as long as we stay over 2,700. So over 2,700, pretty simple. No mystery right here, it's just a momentum play, right? I don't even call it a gap play in a sense that because what we're doing is just, we just like, in this case, all we need to do is buy the highs. When I call it gap play, that means that a lot of things have to come into consideration. Like sometimes you wait, like the day we were playing the Facebook, we have to wait it like for, I think the entry for Facebook on Friday was like at 9.45, 10 a.m., like it gave us a lot of time because we needed to digest all of the all of the move from the from the gap. But this one is like gapping right where we need it, 2700. As long as we stay over the 2700, that can be a momentum play, right? So that's a Google. Let's go into so semiconductor. AMD. Yeah. Uh, let's start with Nvidia. Finally, with the Big drop from 800 to 200. Just kidding. That was the four to one split. Um, so actually, this one was one of my main watches today. And the reason being is we have the massive pullback with the market, right? We have the bounce. And guys, don't be surprised when we put uh, the targets like at 196, right? Like, oh, it's so far out. Just go into the daily chart and try to see what is it that we're trying to hit, right? So basically everybody knows that the 20 day moving average in this one is sitting at 197. That's exactly where we stole. We stole for two days and today we tried and that's where we stole again, right? So for this one, it's pretty clear that what we need is we need a close over 197.24. If you want to be like really aggressive, you want to be on the safe side, you wait for the 200, right? And we expect this one to be basically one and here's like a lower high, right? I'm sorry, higher low. This is a lower low, this is a higher low. So we want a higher low and probably some momentum coming in here. Usually I call these ones um, reversal trades but I'm not calling this a reversal trade because basically because NVIDIA is not in a, in a downtrend. This video, NVIDIA is just, so in that case, I refer to my weekly or my monthly chart and I try to see it. So what I'm seeing right here is like, we are about to trigger a weekly chart, right? A weekly buy over 198 and which should take us to new all time highs. So for NVIDIA, let's look at the 200 as an entry for target one is 208. That's a pretty, this in target, like it's only 4% move. And then from there we go with the FIPS and then it should take us to, to 16 to 20, okay? So let's call NVIDIA 200 for 208 and 215, right? Let's go to TAMD, which is another one that we highlighted yesterday in some commentary in the group because what we had is like something similar to what's, uh, what Amazon is doing, right? We have a, a solid um, range that we can all see, the 50 MA cross the, twin, the 200 MA, which is exactly what I pinpoint on Amazon, right? Those are the details, guys. Those are the little tails. No, it was not, um, it was not on, on Amazon. I think it was Netflix that is about to cross it, right? So we come into AMD. And we have the cross right here. So that's a good tail, right? Like if you take it right here, that's a good trade. That's an awesome trade, of course. Now, what do we go from here? So I was doing probably um, a momentum trade right here. I went with AM, uh, NVIDIA. We failed, of course, because the market failed. So what we're standing is like we're trading the monthly chart. Look at the monthly chart. What we have is a wide uh, tradable range in here too. So all we need to do is wait for the proper setup, right? The proper setup will come as a momentum trade, if you ask me, right? I want to see this one either um, 
take all of the red from today, which is 93, the reason being, oh, we have uh, earnings, okay. So what I wanna see is I wanna see it over 93. That'll be as aggressive as I wanna be. Why? Because we have a massive volume right here. So that red one needs to be erased. So once I go over 93, we can wait 95 and then we get into real target like 100, right? So AMD over 93, over 95 breakout play for, uh, yeah, then we can start playing with the FIPS, right? Like 100, 102. So let's call it 100 and if we hit it over there, I'll be more than happy. So over 93 for 90, over 95 breakout play, 100. So that's AMD. I know Intel uh, reported earnings yesterday. So yeah, I said like no call last time. And the reason is like, I look at the monthly chart and it doesn't look like something I can, I wanna trade. Now, if there's a trade right there, we see it is a second day play, third day play. So under 52 now. The question is like, we have the market coming down so hard today and this thing didn't go. So what is that telling me, right? The 52, like, doesn't look like a lot of people are willing to short this thing at 52, which makes sense. I wouldn't either. Like it's coming from, from 70 and I'm gonna wait for 50 to short it. So yeah, if we go under 52, we can short as a momentum trade. And that's all I'm gonna say about this, right? If you wanna play the reversal, you can play the reversal and you can see it right over there over probably 53, 54, and you can take it for 56, 57, 58, um, you name it, right? Not my favorite thing to play, but now based on the earnings report and holding, you have a clear, uh, clear range where we can work with, right? 52 by 54.75 in Intel. So 52, 54, 74, and that's the range from earnings, right? So it could be it could be interesting. What else do we see here? Uh, Qualcomm, right? I think we're waiting for yeah, Qualcomm, Qualcomm. Which, which has a daily breakout play and it's still, apparently it's gonna wait for us till we, uh, till they report earnings and they, they're gonna just gap it up. So who knows, right? So let's see uh, what I like about Qualcomm. And I think I highlighted last time is like, we have the monthly buy right there, 140. I don't know how, for how long that's been there. So we come back and it's like, yeah, that's that's the chop. I mean, it's like four or five weeks into pretty much the same pattern. What I wanna see is this, this is what I wanna see now, 145.72 with the momentum, you can see all of the, all of the Fibonacci that we throw last time. So we hold at 32 and we just need to make ways on this one. Cause I think it's 146, 170. That's, that's what I want to see, right? So Qualcomm, I'm not sure what was the call last time, but yeah, 146 for 150 looks like a monthly. And that's what, that's what, that's how I want to keep it because it's simple for me. Of course, please let us know if we go over 146, that is a breakout play on a daily. So once we go 146, I'm going to be probably very piggish, especially if we, have the, if we have the momentum. So the thing is that we are reporting tomorrow at AMC, so after the market closes. So yeah, most likely we're going to see 147, 150 if, if it's good, and then we can trade it as a gap. So yep, Qualcomm stays, one of the main watches. What else? After this, we do streamers. Streamers starting with Disney. Mm -hmm. um, so Netflix, we already did it. And I think Disney is showing like some very interesting uh, pattern, right? You go into the weekly, I mean, to the monthly. Uh, um, and I think uh, my notes right here says a month and a week pattern. So I, I like to keep it like that because this is basically where we trigger. We haven't failed. Right, so technically we're just right there. So let's see the weekly, how it's setting up and the weekly tried and now we're here. So um, 8.12, so we got plenty of time. I won't be surprised if we come and test the 186 ahead of uh, earnings, right? So this could be a, a run into earnings and you see that there's, there's some problem right here, 185. In this case, it's about to get, the volume is about to get as long as, a, as the daily point of control that I have right here, right? We're still under the 50, over the 50. So actually the last three or four days, they have been very constructive to the long side. 
this one can be played tomorrow if you want the like to play Disney intraday. I'm not a fan. I usually do um I usually do Disney as a as a slow trade. Like if I see the level that I like in the morning, I just buy it and I sell it at the end of the day. So that's my type of play for Disney, unless it's in play, which is like one or two days a year, like right here, right? Big volume. And then we have the nice move. And that was the day I think that we traded Disney the whole day. But for tomorrow, watch for a move from 180 to 185, right? And that's going to be like the level that we're going to be watching into the earnings. Now, if we start getting over 190, then it's 190 to 203, right? So we got like two tiers right there that we can trade with uh, Disney. Make a note that earnings is on 8, 8.12. So I'm going to write it down right here. 8.12. 8, 180 for 185 for tomorrow. That's, uh, yeah, that looks like it's going to happen. Could happen. Okay, so that's Disney. The other streaming is Roku. And that one was uh, an earnings move, basically. Not much we can do about it. No, it was not earnings. Why was Roku moving? I thought it was earnings. Anyways, so we have something similar. Uh, this is a pattern that I really like, right? It's, it's, this is a call of, a flag formation, I think it is. Um, once you start breaking this one, you start seeing the volume coming in. So this never gave me an indication, actually, volume could continue going down. And what we had is like out of the blue, the move just 430 and it just went, right? My target would have been 456, right? At best, it just went crazy to 473. I think that was Friday when I was trading Facebook. And then I realized yeah, like, right, like on Saturday, I was looking, I was like, wow, we, I, I didn't see a single post about Roku that day. And I was like, wow, that's crazy. So then what happened the next day, setups up. That's, that's not a good one, two, three setup, right? You guys know that this is not a one, two, three setup. It's just a continuation. So they try to break a momentum. They try to break it again. So now it's getting interesting. Why? Because right here, what I can do is I can do some FIPS, which by this time, you guys should know that I use them a lot, right? So what we have is a pullback into, what is it? 50%, uh, I think. Let's do the 50. Let's take the 38. Let's take uh, 72. Two. And let's see where we stand. So if I zoom in, you're going to see that today we tested pretty much a 50%. So that was a market, right? Right there, the 50%. So from here, what I expect is like minor bounce into probably testing the, the prior highs of 490. So um, not my favorite thing to trade because it's, it's just so expensive and so erratic. You know that if you get a bad feel on, on Roku, you're pretty much done, right? Especially if you're using tight stops, you're done. So for for Roku, what I want to see is like probably this one holding, what are we calling that? 450, 460. So it has to be 465 if you guys want to do it tomorrow, right? And this this is going to be 465, 485, basically. Roku. So I want you guys to understand that I'm working on inside that last pullback as a FIP retracement right so the entry will be 465 and target will be 485 and that's a stretching right now once we go over 490 that's a different that's that's a whole different game right because what we're doing is we, we want to be working into this sideways pattern that we have of course is a is a is a tradable range you come and see the monthly or the weekly actually weekly just it's just enough right you look at that that's a tradable range. I think uh, we make a couple calls on this one. Not sure how many people took it. This is the bigger one, the 50 50% 50, 50 pullback right here to the penny. And now we're testing all time highs, which is exactly target one for a FIP retracement, right? So that's number one. So we play either the smaller one that we have right here, if you're so inclined to play Roku, or you play the momentum break 490 and then all time highs, no big deal. We play with that, right? So over 490 for a Momo. I think that's it with the streamers because we don't follow the other ones. Um, I want to go into the payments now and see what they're up to. So let's take a look at Square and uh, 
again, I don't use anything too complicated. Mine is if I don't see it, if I don't, if the chart is not talking to me, there's no reason why I should put my money on that on that trade, right? It's not our intention to be analysts and try to pretend that we know exactly what every single stock could be doing or, or is going to do. That's that's not the purpose of the exercise. The exercise is just to see if there's a setup that you like, that you know how to trade and that you have high odds or what we call edge, and then we take it and, and we trade it, right? So let's look at this one. So what are we looking is a daily breakout play, earnings on 8.5. So it looked like it was going to do it. Like we have the one, two, three, four, five days. So as we started the conversation today, you know I'm not very kind of buying the fifth day, right? I'd rather wait for the pullback. So actually this pullback, I like it. Look where we stop. Technical levels, 246, right on spot. So this one, if we were looking at this, this is the kind of things we need to be looking where the market is taking those uh, big moves or making those big moves because we know 245, you want to be, you know that the queues are at support. You can take some reversal trade right here for a good five, six, seven points, which pay you quite nice if you do them, right? So there's no secret right there. You're just waiting, we're just working with a key level. I haven't talked about key levels in a long time. So this is a key level because we were like so far off all of our key levels, all of our point of control, our monthly levels and everything. So let's put on our alert. So we now we know that's 275 must hold for Q, for uh, SQ. And then we have a trade road range from 245 to 265. 245 to 265. May come into play tomorrow if we have another day of morning sell-off, right? Probably testing 243, 245. Then we start coming back into 248. Then we know that this could be another red bar right here. And then a green one. And we can take this 245 to 265. Not bad, guys. That's not about Idria. That's a tradable range. Okay. Then we go into PayPal, which I think it's a little stronger than this one, if I remember correctly. And it is. We're far from the point of control, far from the 260 accumulation zone. So all we can do in here is try to play the momentum. Again, this is this one is the market. If you come and look at this one, one, two, three, four, five, into the 20 MA, new all-time highs yesterday red candle signal prior to the market. Actually, this one gave us a signal pre before the market, before today. And then today we have the sell off into, look at the level right here. Don't call me on that one, but this 292.40 and we stop on 294.32, which is less than two points, which is less than 1%. So you are like hitting the technical levels on less than 1%. That's why, I, that's the other thing I don't do. Like I'm, I'm me calling like things within, a half an ATR or a quarter an ATR doesn't make any sense, right? Because that's just noise. That's the area where I expect things to start turning or buyers to start showing, right? So for PayPal, I'm going to be playing with the market. Basically, this is this is going to be just over 310. And this is going to be a, a simple momentum trade, right? That's PayPal. I know some of you guys also look at the... All the payment methods, uh, I don't like them. I don't like to trade them unless you have like a pretty good setup. And I think we did have a good move on MasterCard a couple of weeks ago of the point of control, of the point of control into same level. So this is a tradable range. If you're inclined to do those, that's uh, going to give you another one, 364 by 394. So there you go. There you have it. If you would like to do that, and then you have Visa, which is acting a little better. Actually, we are in a an uptrend, and we just this is this is a monthly chart, guys. This is a monthly long over two, three, seven. So I think that trigger. Mm -hmm. I don't even know when. They just had earnings too. Oh, they have earnings. So yeah, this one's gonna be momentum, whatever it is. You know, two fifty two, and then two forty two, two fifty two. Again, this is not the type of things that I will look for or put on my watch list. I haven't. It's if like the, low beta, right? Right. If the scanner picks it up, that means that it's doing like high volume today and it's doing something and then my alerts will start showing me. Then I'll go to that. But it's not my favorite as far as me trying to make easy money. Not easy money, but the easier way, right? Uh, I feel like I have no edge on those. 
because of the way they trade. So let's do the, the automakers, the EVs, uh, Tesla. So Tesla, we have another one, another, another gambler's killer, I think. Um, so what we have is just, I don't know what's going on with this one, but look at the level. I mean, 644 and it's right there, right? So we were waiting for the 711. I think it's 701 or 711. Let me double check. I think it's 711 that we call, right? Yeah, we want the 711 monthly point of control, right? Still there, still waiting. Can you trade this thing? Of course you can trade it, 700. You can make uh, 50 cents any side that you want, or even a point, or even two points, or even seven points, which is 1% move, right? But I don't have it, I have no edge right there, right? So what I wanna see is I wanna make sure that I'm long this one if we ever go over 700. So for Tesla, we go over 700 and over 711, which is the point, uh, monthly point of control. I wanna keep that one in mind. 711 monthly point of control. Why? If I'm so lucky that I buy a 700 and then I start closing over 712, I'm not taking those 10 points because probably what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be running to 750, 800. So I wanna make sure I take a little bit more of that move. So Tesla stays, I think it hasn't done, hasn't done anything over the last month. The chart is telling me that, so. Would you try a short here? On Tesla? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can, you can short it, absolutely. 644 to 600, yeah. The thing is like, we will need at least a setup, right? like the strategy so if if like uh like, yeah let's have the discussion because we, we we why not i mean like yeah totally we can say this is an uptrend right we pick make the low right here the fibonacci so we try to make a low so yes we don't have a new low we have a lower high i agree is this a new lower low it's not yeah, not so really. Technically, we, we're not in a downtrend, right? We failed to make a low, so we just sideways right here. Now, we, we didn't make a high, but this one, and remember, this is a weekly, so this one is actually a higher low. So what we have in is very much like a wedge right here. Like, uh, no, it's, it's, uh, I don't know what is it. I don't know what you yeah, guys call it. basically a wedge. Like it, this one's coming down and this one's coming up, right? You, you, if you throw it from here. So that's like, yeah. that's what that's I want tight. this is tight. So it is, it, 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 it is about to do something. And I was, I was thinking it was going to do, I, I, it was going to be on earnings, right? So can you short it? Absolutely. This is your short, right? 619 for 581, which is like 40 points on yeah it's like eight percent move so yes if you can get the meat of that move for an eight percent move i'll totally do it right as long as i have low um low implied volatility in the in the options and everything so now with with um with the earnings pass so probably you're gonna be back you gotta get better right you get my point so the main idea and you guys notice when we're trading right when we trade in intraday, I try to post the things that I think have the chance to have a massive day. Trade of the day yesterday was AAL, right? 18 to 21, that's three points on an $18 stock. So that's like what, 14%? Wow. You can make money out of that, simple, right? In one day. Now, if you're feeling, and I get it, that Tesla is going to drop tomorrow, 619 to 580. I'll take that trade because I'm thinking, okay, we can have an 8% move in Tesla and I'll take an 8% move in anything. What is showing us, like, even though the market crapping today, we open at 645 and all you can do was like 15 points. I mean, it's 2%, but it's Tesla, right? So that's the main, that, that, that's how, how I trade basically, right? So yes, under the under today's low, 620, 624, we can go all the way, and I'm gonna show it again right here to 577. So that's when I say, like, yeah, make sure you know exactly what structure you're playing, right? Because then when you start justifying trades in the middle, you're gonna start justifying trades in here. 
the, in here, I get it, but people will be doing and justifying trades in here, right? Like, oh, this is a short or this is a long. And I'll be like, yeah, well, you're in the middle of nowhere. It just moves because it's so expensive, right? But the meat of the move is something like directional, right? So there are some points that I don't want to miss it for sure. I don't want to miss Tesla at 577, 581, which is the 50 MA. Right now we are the 20 day, 20 weekly MA, which is 649. So that's interesting. I know it's 685 and 700. So those are like levels that I want to be watching, right? 645. Now we start getting, now you get it. Like right here, 620, absolutely. 577, right? 577, right here. 555, 577. So yeah, write it down. Keep it posted because I'll do it. I mean, if that's the day that Tesla is going to give us 8% and absolutely short in it, right? So 619, 4577, right? But the main one that I would, don't want to don't wanna miss is the 700 move, right? And you guys remember when I was calling Tesla, when was it, Kyle, last year? When, when, oh, it, was yeah. gonna, when was... it was gonna disappear <laughs> and everybody was short. And I said like, I don't wanna miss Tesla when we break, when we go over 400 and we have to move 400 to 900. So that's like, we, we enjoy that thing like for what, like for four months or five months making money yeah. in the hundreds of points on that stock. So that's basically what we try to do here, guys. So put you in the fastest running car. So even if you go for small targets, you're going to get there fast. Okay. So that's the Tesla. That was a good review on technical analysis, actually. And this is Neo, right? Neo was looking like it was going to break and i think it was on my watch list last week because what we had was the pullback and look at this like the one two was about to go right here the 47 never trigger and that's the importance of having them trigger actually i know we we have the tendency psychological if we think it's going to go to 48 and it's at 47.89 why not buy it right there right it's cheaper so we get in and then you get stopped right so we wait for the technicals to make sure that we got a solid entry. So this one never triggered. That was a one, two, perfect setup, never triggered. We had the gap down, done. So where, where are we now? As far as Neo, um, I don't like the fact that we're under this accumulation. We have the zones, like you see the red is here, the, the black is here. So we got a lot of conflicting information. What it means is that I have volume at 46 all the way to 36, that's 10 points. So that's like a 20% range. Now, how can we play this one? We could start looking at NEO if we get to the 36 area, right? So NEO, what I'm gonna call it is I'm gonna call it as a range, right? Tradable range 3646. Tradable range 4636 means you can play inside the range or you can play the breakdown play or the breakout play out of the range, meaning if you think this is a box, once you go in the 36, you can short it to 30, right? That's six points. That's a 20% move. Very nice move. Now, if you think it's going to go over here, once you go over 48, yeah, it's like 47.33. Let's make it like really, really clear. 47.50, I want it. 47.50 by 36. Once you go over 47.50, you know you can, hit, you can get like 50 or 55 easily. So we're talking about 12 points on 40 thumb. That's like 30% move. So this one stays. We got to keep an eye on this one. Um, probably not tomorrow unless we got news, but we know how they play, right? So now we got the, the trade. So 36, 47, 50, that's the range. And we're looking for a breakout play or a breakdown play. You want to play the range, keep us on the loop because if you see a hammer, forming around here and then the following day we see 38 i'm taking that one okay so that's how we trade that's the neo the other one that was uh xpf xpev so that was similar that had the one two that it, it didn't trigger either and now we are at 34 7 which is um daily point of control but that one can go easily to 30. so based on the size of the move today directional volume 241 percent i think this can be this can go as a second day play 
one, two, three formation, right? So what I'm trying to say is that probably is not gonna give us the two, like the one, two, and then the three, probably is just gonna go one and then tomorrow. Let me see how it's looking. Yeah, this, this is like uh, momentum, 33. The problem is that we have a tight, tight, tight. Um, I mean, that's, that's a small target, 32. 32, 31. Yeah, I don't see a big target. I'll play momentum. So if you want to go on this one, on the prior day slow. So expect PDL. Guys, I need I need two minutes because I, I, I wasn't sure we were going to have this one. So somebody, I need to take a call. Just give me two minutes, please. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Mute me or can you... Whatever on trade today. Boot to the short idea, Mish. Nice. Observe observation day, Doug. Observation. Wow, a lot of observation. Yeah, I was pretty much in that same boat. I took I took a small trade in TTD. I don't really like to do those market divergence plays, like going long when the market is short. So usually in those, pretty quick. Thank you. You're back. You're back. Yes, sir. That was quick. So XPV. So what are we doing with XPV? Probably, yeah, you can we can trade the momentum. We have the target at 32, target one right here. We can see it. But yeah, the way I'll trade it is just momentum, right? Like a like a continuation day two, second day play. This is what we that's this is what we're looking. So you we have a massive move on big uh, big volume staying under BWAP the whole day. So all we need is to take the low and that's the momentum entry. So that's XPV. Anything else on the on the cars? Should we see the, the other ones? Four, 1375, 1379. Uh, we coming into earnings. I was looking for this one to have, I think, I think I was looking for a daily buy or weekly buy right here. So over 1432, we can take a look at that one and see how the volume is working. So 1432, 
Um, I don't like the fact that this retracement is a little bit too deep for my liking. You guys know the fifth theory, if we go down 61, 60 something now, it's really hard to make uh, new highs. So this may stay in a range for a while, but if we start getting 14 with earnings, we can probably see a pop to 15, 1550, that we can make some money right there. So that's for Ford. Then we go to GM. And this one was another one that tried to break. And I think they're, they just, they still having problems with the chips and stuff. So we got this massive level right here, 59. That's the daily point of control. Now, can we play sort of um, range trade? Yeah, I mean, the question, the answer is always yes, right? Because at any point in time, anything can go up, down, or sideways, or do nothing, or whatever. So at any point in time, you can if you do the if if analysis, if it goes over 50, 54, 56 with volume, uh, papa, then you go long. But that will be more of a momentum type of thing if we find it during the day. Okay. So good luck, dog. Thanks for stopping by. So that's the GM. Let's look for what else we have. Let's see the cars. We have the cars. It, um, it could be good to look at. Uh, I wonder what your thoughts on the Chinese names are, or if, or if there's too many broken charts there. Yeah, I think. Yeah, that, that's what follows. Baba, Baidu, and JD, which is like. Let's see. Let's see if there's anything to do there, besides short. <laughs> um. Look where we are on Baba. Look where we stop, 175, 179, right here. We're back into this area right here for the monthly. So is that the time to buy? It's like oversold in all of my charts, right? Mm. Check the volume today, geez. B big volume. This is usually, if this was not as close as yesterday, I will say this is capitulation. So we're done and we, we can play versus the 180 right here as a long, right? So like literally, this is support. This is the entry, like 180. We have it today. We can have it tomorrow too. But it's, it's pure reversal. And then I, I'm going to have to go into one, two, three, four days, higher volume. The problem is like for capitulation moves, let's look when else it happened, right? Like right here, right? You have, you have the big move from 235 down to 205, which is like 40 points, right? Bigger volume, like it's like two, three times over the average, right? And then from here, technically, if you buy it right here, you were never stop and you hit 231, which is where we came from. From here, all the way here, you put the red all the way here, back here. So basically, if you think this is a breakdown play, this is the this is the end, this is a reversal, and you came back to exactly the break point, right? So that's what I will expect, right? So now the problem is like we have the one, two, three, four, which is a big move into 180. Now, how do I trade? Usually, how do I usually trade this? What I don't want to see is I don't want to see two days of increased volume or even three days, right? This is like one, two, but this is like two days. So that's like there's still distribution right there. They, they didn't finish yesterday, right? And we remember what happened with Baidu. The problem with that they have, uh, what was it with Baidu? Remember that they have they have some trouble that the Chinese were, oh, that was the guys that were leveraged. The family office, that guy that was long. Yeah, Huang, I think it was. Remember that he was long AMC and all, I don't know why he was long or something that blew up, right? And he needed to get liquidate Baidu. So the brokers were liquidating Baidu for him. So that's why Baidu went down like, X many days and I was like, wow, when is this gonna stop? So I don't know if this is like massive liquidation from big institutions, which can absolutely happen. Now, as far as we as technical traders are, right? I will tell you this right now, right here. If we go over yesterday's high, which is 186.77 today, I can totally play this one for a bounce to 192. 
and then I take it day by day. So yes, it is, right? The only reason why I'm not loving it is because we have two days of massive distribution. So that's not gonna be my main one. But if we see going, absolutely. Now, would I trade it like heavy? No, I won't. I trade it like probably half my size and tight stop and, and just trying to see where it's going. Like if we, if we happen to find uh, 30 or 40% bounce, that'll be, that'll be the idea on Baba. So I'm going to put it right here and I cannot call it capitulation, right? Because of the volume, right? For capitulation, you volume. Need, yeah, you need the volume. The volume has to be like so extreme that you say, oh, everybody, everybody gave up. You see like this one is still going. Like this is a, this is a capitulation that I was talking about, right? This is the day, right? This is a daily chart. So we coming from here, 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 here. Look at the volume. So the morning, we are at 173. Look where we close, 208. So that was the day that, like, that, that was the, like the 40 day points on, on Baidu. And this one started showing in our scans like early in the morning, because it was making so much volume that at this point, this was like at the open. It had already done like the normal volume in the day. So this is capitulation. This is when I want to get long, right? If we go back to Baidu, Baba, I'm sorry, we didn't have that one. Right, we did have a little bounce, but look at the volume. We have two days of distribution, so it's not capitulation. This is a, this is like the typical capitulation trading right here. You want to buy, absolutely not a problem, and you sell end of the day, right? Because you know it's gonna be like, it, it's gonna bounce like two or three days. So that's what I'm looking for. Like in here, we need to take an, a, a look, but I think based on monthly. Now we broke the day, the monthly point of control right here for the last five years, which is what, what I use right here. Think about that. Baba is at the five year point of control. So that's an interesting point. So what happened if Baidu comes all the way to 136, right? So actually let me do something. Let me, let me start making these types of alerts in case that happened in one day, because it, it can happen tomorrow. Some bad news and it starts just dropping to 136. The moment I see it 136 and we have the massive volume, we, we buy some at 136 and we hold it. We hold it for two weeks, right? Could probably bounce 40 points or 50 points. So that will be my take on, on this one, right? Can you trade it? as a pure intraday trade momentum trade absolutely so but for that you guys pretty much know exactly what to do right when whenever you have the pattern you have the pattern right here like here short that's a short right here you enter and then you close so that's that's not that's totally different to to what we're talking about right here right what i'm talking about right here is in a case that we flush Again, into 178 with massive volume, we can take couple couple contracts into next week. Even the 180 is 190, and those are gonna go like a thousand percent easily. You're right? you're talking like ten times average, like insane volume, right? Just so we're clear on what massive. Yes, massive capitulation means, uh... has to be massive volume, right? And this is basically like um, if you come on Baidu, right? Baidu Baidu trades normally about 11 million shares. So you're seeing a day like this one, this, this that I'm here at 28, 27 million. So everybody's looking at that thing, right? You're doing three times volume. And the next day you do 120 million. How big is that? <laughs> right? Yeah. Has, hasn't done it. So that's the capitulation that this was the, after this, we learned that the family office had and they have to liquidate and this is when you say like, well, there, there's a whale, basically massive liquidation of a whale and they're going to just drop the bits, you know, whatever. Yeah, let him, let him flush. And that, that's the flush. That's what we want to see as a flush. So whenever we see this, if we look at intraday, I promise you, intraday, you're going to see this, right? The massive drop and then the big bits just jumping in. And that's a play that back in the day when I used to do the, the stocks only, that, that was something that we looked for quite a lot, right? Just doing the, the, the bounces, right? The capitulation bounces, because you can make 
literally 20, 30 points in, in just one day on one stock that is not supposed to move 30 points. So yeah, it has to be, when you're talking capitulation, it has to be like massive volume, like something extraordinary, right? Like right here, we're talking average is uh, 12, and that day you were making 57, which is like four times, uh, close to five times, right? 12 times five, that's 60, 500%, right? So that's the day you say like, okay, something's up right here. Now, 60 million is a lot, but we did it two days in a row. So I, was, I should have expected to see something, but today you just drop it. Now, we, we close on a, on a green bar, so a lot of people might be trapped, right? That's what I'm willing to consider along tomorrow, right? Because if they didn't close past when the market actually bought them, which is at 115, if they didn't close their shorts, probably they all have the, the stops at 180, 190. Some of them probably are short that they have the stops at 183. So basically it's the same thing that the Wall Street bets were doing, right? It's just a uh, short squeeze. squeeze. Exactly. It could be a short squeeze. Basically that's, that's the technical term of what we try to do when you do the capitulation, right? People tend to chase the momentum so they don't realize that they're down like 20% in three days and they just keep shorting and shorting and shorting. The moment that the bids start coming out, that's when the massive run up come happen. So let's do JD and look at JD, it's the same chart. So basically they bought them today, right? Hey, look, now for location, look at JD, look at the monthly buy and look at the Fibonacci. So we're testing the 61%. So we have something here we haven't lost it all. So actually JD could be a good watch. We are at, remember guys, I use I use my Bollinger Bands. So I know we're at three, three, three standard deviations, right? So we have a three standard deviation. If I see a gap or any move over 6503, 6539, that's a, that's a play too. So JD over 65, 40, 65, 50, right? And this has to be momentum, guys. We don't we don't wait for this thing to um, like uh, like make sure you understand the place, right? It's just out of the blue. You see the volume, and it just goes. This cannot start doing this because if we start doing this, that means we're not at the bottom just yet, right? What we're playing is like people trapped, trapping the shorts, right? So these guys are trapped. If we take 65.50 right here, they're going to be trapped. So 65, we go easily 68, 70. Why not? Right? I like this. I like this one. Pretty, pretty awesome that you brought this this one up, uh, Kyle, because it's different, right? As the market starts changing, we need to change too. We can, I mean, we can do everything the same, but but there's there's some other possibilities that we can work with. So that's JD. Uh, let's look at snow. Snow is a, is is. Um, I'm looking at a, a breakout play. You guys know that the main play that we're trying to do here is the monthly. So the monthly setting up. It's not an easy trade. It hasn't been easy. 256. We have the all the accumulation in this area, right here. It looked like it was gonna go. Gave us a pullback, and now we're right here. So for sure, what we don't want to miss is the 275, 7, 300, right? And that's gonna happen. Who knows when? but we got to have it on watch. So daily breakout play, that's 275 for 300. But the main thing that we're trying to play is the monthly chart, right? And this is, in, this is a recent new, new, new issue, right? So you know that once we start 300, 325, we go for 400, 450 or whatever it is, new highs. What that this is technology, right? Yeah, this is this is not Roblox. This is snow. So what else we have here? Um and do social I, media. I did not wow, I totally forgot. Yeah, let's do Airbnb that I have it right here. Just just the, the last one we have, and then we do social media. Airbnb. Because I know Airbnb, it's also a reversal watch. That's what that's how I have it. Yeah, it's not there yet. Um it was a nice trade today based on the setup that could that could trigger like this is good for a scalp 
So what I'm looking is 143 to 148. I thought it was a better looking chart, to be honest. So 143, 148, not, not the best looking chart. Let's do social media. So we have Facebook that we already talked about. We have Snap that gap to new all-time highs, right? Um, basically, what we did is we cleared the 74. That's my green line right here. So I want to make sure that I am right there. So what we have was an overshoot today to the downside. I want to see if this one stays. Of course, uh, I'll be a buyer of NVIDIA, sorry, Snap, anything over 75, right? Into 77, into 80. That's 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 my, 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 my alert, what my alert is. Like once we start taking today's low, I don't want to be, I don't want to get involved in this one anymore, right? So this is basically momentum. And, and what we're doing is, um, uh, an earnings drift. I call it the earnings drift, meaning we have a big up up, and now we're just seeing where if if the earnings are gonna carry momentum to the upside. Let me see. Hassan is telling me about the ah, you like in the weeklies? I like it. Yes, a one, two, three on a weekly chart is exactly the easier way to put it. Weekly one, two, three. That's the trade I want to make. Thank you so much. Okay, earnings drift. So you can play uh, 75, 77, if conditions are, right? So this was like the test. So, you know, based on the day of the gap, I trade this one and quick, that's an intraday trade, nothing major. Let's see Twitter, how's, how's that one going? They, they try to break, it didn't. Like from that day, I told you guys, I don't like trading Twitter. I don't, I don't think it traded well doesn't trade well usually so for me it's just like i don't even like it so over 73 for 80 that's that'll be like if i have to do it <laughs> 480 and it's just the way it trades so that's uh twitter that's a pin pins p-i-n-s so we have earnings coming and let's see if this one's setting up i like the weekly uh um 74.29, you can see it right here. It's uh, like a big level. Uh, we could have, no, I don't think so. I think that's tomorrow, right? We, ha we have like two days. So if they run it, if we have like a bullish day tomorrow. We, ha we, we have 77.30, we can trade it 77.480, right? But that would be like the best thing that I can do right now, considering that we're, um, and I call it an earnings run because we have a uh, two days into earnings report. So I'm not sure you you, you really want to do it. So that will be um, the social media. The other thing that we've been looking at is the airlines and the casinos, right? Um, the cruises, I'm sorry. So we got the AAL and um, reason why I, I'm bringing this one is because we hit the 200 MA, right? So he gave us like the perfect setup right here at three standard deviations, the 200 daily EMA, and then the setup right here prior to earnings, right? So we have the running to earnings. We have the earnings report, did nothing. And then yesterday we broke, right? So what I'm trying to do is I'm going to see if, well, look where we're coming from, right? We're coming from three standard, the 200 EMA, we finally over the, the, the 50 EMA. So I can see a target into 23, which is a target I think I called. So this one might might give us a decent trade. This is the this is the other way to look at it, right? I'm looking at a tradable range, right? On a weekly chart, right? We 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 came. This is accumulation target one right here. Why you see it here? That's the target. 25. We hit it. Came back pretty much all the way down to this level 17.44. Not even. And now we put in the almost an outside week, right? An outside week on big volume, we can see it here. So let's see if this momentum can carry. I, I mean, it could be a quick scalp, like if, if you don't wanna overthink it too much and you just see a 22, 20 with momentum, you can take it for 23, 24, who knows? So AAL, and I think the other one that um, look interesting is now, this one's not there yet, UAL, not the same pattern. They can all go, don't get me wrong, but 50 by 51, what I like most about this one is that we're finally over the 200, over the 50, 
over the 20 MA and over the daily point of control. So that's why it made it to my list for uh, the, the main watch for yesterday. I think it was a Monday, right? So let's have the AAL and CCL. Um, what is it that I like about this one? Uh, this is this, this is a pullback. This is uh, uh, COVID closings and everything, technical bounds right in here. I don't know what's going to happen here. Are they going to disappear? If they're going to disappear, they have to come all the way to 10, right? So although this is not really um, at the three standard deviations that I like to see it, I don't know why it didn't touch. At least we have the bigger volume, right? And then we have the green bar. This is sort of sort of capitulation. I would have loved to see it at 120, like something like this, right? But this is interesting compared to the levels that we were, we were managing. If we go 26 versus 94, that's like four times average volume on that day. And then we have the bounce. This is what I'm thinking that we could potentially do in BABA or JD. And we have a solid two-day move. Now, what do we have? Supposedly, this should have start falling. If we don't, I can trade this one as a momentum trade. So 2340 for 2540 on CCL. 2340 for 2540 for CCL. And that's a 10% move that we can capture. If we're lucky, we can get probably 26 bucks. Let's see the weekly, how it looks. So nothing I really love in there. And CLH, I think, is the other one that we look and see. And see, as you can see, I, I don't follow it because I don't even know the ticker. But look at the chart. It's exactly the same chart, right? So it's CCL and CLH, same pattern, 2630 for 27 something. I know that should be another one, another cruise, but I don't even know what, what it is. So same same idea. Um, Something else you guys like? Uh, I think I was looking at uh, um, Piton. I know that's that's one that we like to trade. What I like is the monthly buy at monthly point of control. So the, that one's already there. Um, let's see. We have a massive drop. I think I have it on my watch list today as a momentum trade. One twenty-five never triggered, right? So we're right there. 123, what I really want is the 125. Now let's go to see the weekly chart and let's see if there's something in there. I think the better trade is 130, right? Once we go 130, we can start seeing 140, 150. I don't know what's gonna happen with, with the pandemic and all that stuff. This is another big move, higher volume. Although the following day is, is a reversal day, right? We, we guys know that one. We gap down and then we take the, the prior day slow on good volume. But this is, a, this is not nearly as clean as we want it to be. But this is like the end, right? Like massive effort from the bears, flush, and not really, not really um, further move down right like no reward they, they say like this is there's a lot of effort right here from the bears and no reward they didn't make it they just brought it down one point so that's nothing right so piton i would like to see it over 129 130 131 for the daily breakout play uh how are we doing on time we got a few minutes okay guys shoot Mat, M-A-T, what is M-A-T? Post earnings. Oh, Mattel. Okay, one, two, three. Yep, 22.25. So I assume we're looking for how, how long, how high this can go. Uh, uh, 22.25, 23.30, and then once we clear 23.30, 23.30, we go 25.48, right? You can do an extension. What, what was the move prior day, 19 to 21? So that's like two points. So if we start at 22, it could be like 24. Yeah, about this, like 25. This is where I have it. Yeah, MAT. Not sure. I haven't traded that one in. Uh, well, we know Starbucks has been like going up forever. 
and is one of the favorite that CNBC pump machine. So it's just like we said last time, yeah, play the play the the uptrend. I think that was a note that we put Starbucks, just momentum. We have BCO. I think uh, you were looking at that one last time. Nothing really. I have Shui as a monthly buy, CHWY, and I think that one almost triggered yesterday. I think I, I took a stop yesterday on this one intraday. Still there. Um, now what I put is like, like a 90, 90, 90. So I should wait for the second attempt to break. It, it was in a in, um, squeeze up until yesterday. Today, it triggered the squeeze, but it triggered to the downside. So what I want to see is a regaining 88. Let's see. Yeah, it, it, this one looks good. Was it today that I called Chewy? No, I think it was yesterday. I think that I think was yesterday, was, yeah. Yeah, it was yesterday, yeah. It, it's just one of, and this is one of the, the stocks that, I, like when I don't know the stocks that well, I, it's just hard. Like when I saw it, I was like right here and I was like, yeah, guys, we got to watch this one. And then I try to buy the, the pullback and then I, you don't even know Shui, right? So the volume just dead after that, right? Basically, they just pump it at the open and then, you know, so I took my stop and I was like, yeah, I don't want to trade that anymore. But if we go back 88, then I'll be right there because this, this is what I have my my alert. 88, 90. The main idea with Chewy is weekly. I like the weekly setup that we have right here. And I like uh, if we can make make uh, make the um, daily point of control, I mean, the daily breakup play. I have a list that I've been collecting for stock that are like near daily point of control that I, we don't usually trade, but I think they're worth keeping an eye. So I'm going to bring it. I don't know if you guys trade Meli, Mercado Libre, but uh, I haven't traded, but I think it looks good. So 1644 Meli, DHI is also one that I'm looking uh, for. This one is like uh, the 95, 9550. Um, we go into the monthly and the monthly is like a monthly buy. So it could be another one that we should have. And the other one is CrowdStrike. We haven't done any security in a while. So this one is just like, it was trying to break um, to all time highs. So I'm going to play it as a momentum, 272. By the way, now that we're looking at CrowdStrike, let's look at FireEye, hasn't done anything. Other one that we used to trade fastly, nothing. Um, Roblox, we used to trade it to nothing. Um, Moderna, Moderna hit the, the, the hit ultimate target 350, right? So that was that was fun, guys. That was fun. That was the breakup play, and then the gap up on the news. I don't even know what the news was, I think it was the, 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 the Delta variant, right? So, anyways, this one could be setting up. I saw it today. That's what that's what I have it like clear in my mind. That's the 317. So for Moderna, I want to see. I want to. I want to look at the 300 by 350, and see how we how we react to that. Right. Once we start getting settled a little bit, let me see if the weekly is showing us something. Not really. Not really. So uptrending Moderna. Just a watch. Something that I'm watching. Um, uptrend. So, you know, for uptrends, what I usually do is I like to see how they react to the pullbacks at the 20 MA, at the 8 MA, and see if we have a next day, following day with continuation move, right? That goes over on on on, on volume. So let's see Fiverr, F-B-R-R. -R. Um, yes, I like that one. Look at the monthly. I like the monthly. It's over accumulation zone, 244, 228 over the 50, over 200, over the 20 MA, over the point of control. I like it. Fiber, good volume today, 151%, 247, 250. I like that one, Kyle. Yes. Yes, Fiber, FBRR. So um, I'll play it as a as a daily breakout play over 256, but you can trade it momentum 246, 246. 246. 256 and then over 256 will be the the breakout play right and i know the guys uh benny want to see aep aep what is aep american electric power aep oh 
nice chart. Well, it's massive accumulation, 85. I hope you got a piece at 85, if not at 88. 88 was the entry today. So let me see the weekly. Ah, it's, it's just massive sideways. So be aware that you have a 90, you have a 90, 92. That's, that's like targets, right? AEP, guild. Um, guild is hard, man. Guild is so hard to trade. It's just, look at the monthly. If you want to see something that I don't like to trade, look at the monthly of, 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 of guild. Like, not at all. Um, can it move? Absolutely. Uh, it can do anything it wants, but I don't think I'm going to be looking at that one. FFIV, FFIB was in my list as a breakout play of a base. Didn't break on the earnings, and today it just decided to break. Or was that the earnings? Yeah, that was the earnings move. So this one stays. We should take a look at this one because what we're looking is the 216. Uh, how much do I like that pattern? It's a range. Yeah, I wish we, I, I wish we didn't have that one because what I was what I was looking was for 196 to 216. That was a 10% move. So now we just gotta wait for 216 and see how it works. So that one's gone. FFIB. Now that I see the FFs, SQ we already did. We we did snow. We did uh, Melly. We did Twilo. Twilio is another one that I have on my um, list. So that one's pretty clear, 415, 420. That's where we want to take it. Qualcomm, we do have it. And we have the TTD2 on my list right here, 82. So we try to break 85. I think 85, 86, once we clear, when we, once we clear that one, that, that's a better trade. And I don't know why I do have JK Solar, but I don't think that one's that one already went the other way. GE, that was, that was a gap today trying to make your comeback the the real trade is 13.5 14 bucks 14.50 so this is where we want to be like the ge look at look at the monthly right so we've been dealing with this this is a base so now we're like down and we're basing so is this the short from 13 to 705 or are we going to be able to go 15 to 20. okay guys thank yeah. you so much Thank you, Mario. Keep trading well, keep keep posting those. And I think uh, if the market continues to work like it's been, uh, we should have a problem finding stocks every single day. So thank you so much guys for your help and on everything, okay? Thanks for your time. See you sure. guys in the morning. Okay, bye guys. Bye.